there is another way of looking at oxidation and reduction, and that is in terms of oxidation number. But essentially, this is a theoretical concept, which is again based on the loss or gain of electrons. If you can work out the oxidation number of an element in a compound, that can be very, very useful in predicting what's been oxidized, what's been reduced, which is the oxidizing agent, which is the reducing agent. Some equations do not take place in ionic conditions. So you don't see then electrons being gained or lost. But using this concept can work with anything. Covalence, basically, is what I'm talking about. However, how to work out the oxidation number? Well, firstly, oxidation number works for ionics and covalence. Ionics are easy. If you have, for example, an ionic like sodium chloride, in that the sodium is present as an Na plus and the chlorine as a Cl minus. We say that the oxidation numbers are plus one and minus one. In other words, the oxidation number of an element in an ionic compound is simply the charge on that ion. If I had something like, I don't know, let's have a look, uh, copper chloride, then the copper ion is a two plus ion, the chloride will always be one minus, so therefore that's plus two and that's minus one. So ionic compounds are easy. Covalent compounds involve a kind of um, an assumption. What we're going to do, let's take a covalent compound. Let's take uh, water, as it's a very familiar covalent compound. Now, the water molecule, you may remember this from year 11, has a V-shape. Lone pairs of electrons on the oxygen will cause electron repulsion, and effectively we will see a V-shape. Now that V-shape has oxygen on one side and hydrogen on the other. Oxygen is a more electronegative element than hydrogen. So these electrons in the covalent bonds are not being shared evenly. They are going to be way, way more towards the oxygen than the hydrogens. And we represent that with partial charges, delta minus for the oxygen and delta plus for the two hydrogens. What that means is we have now a polar molecule. One side of it is slightly negative and the other side is slightly positive. And that's got far-reaching consequences because water, as we know, is the solvent that we depend upon for life. And if water wasn't that V-shape, we wouldn't be here. But that's another story altogether. In terms of oxidation number, what we do is what we did with the ionic. The ionic has ions. The electrons have been transferred. Here, they're not being transferred, but there is a tendency for the oxygen to get them over the hydrogens. We allow that tendency to go all the way. So in other words, oxygen now becomes a two minus ion, and hydrogen becomes a one plus ion. And the oxidation numbers would be oxygen is minus two, and hydrogen is plus one. Uh, just a small point, when we do charges, we put the number before the charge. When we do oxidation numbers, we put the charge before the number. No big deal. I don't think they'd worry about it if we didn't do that, but that's the convention. Um, let's take another molecule that, again, you're very familiar with, and that would be carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide has carbon double bonded to oxygens, as we know. Oxygen is again way more electronegative than carbon, so oxygen will take the electrons towards itself, and that means it would become delta minus, and the carbon would be delta plus. This time it's taking two electrons from the double bond, so this becomes minus two, and that becomes minus two. What do you think the carbon would become in that situation? Okay, well those are both together, minus 4, so that would be a plus 4. Um, what if it had a charge? What if you had something like the nitrate ion, NO3 minus? Well, again, oxygen will be minus 2. It's more electronegative than nitrogen. Three of them means the total would be minus 6. And one 
of those charges is left over. So therefore, what would nitrogen have to be in an ion like NO3 minus? And hopefully you can see that would be A plus 5. Okay, so they're really quite easy. Just identify which is the more electronegative element in a covalent compound, give it the electrons it requires, and then effectively work out the two values. Okay, how does that help us in terms of oxidation and reduction? Well, effectively, the definitions in terms of oxidation number are very easy. Oxidation is an increase in the oxidation number and reduction is a decrease. in the oxidation number. And the reason, of course, this works is because when oxidation number goes up, it becomes more positive. It means it's losing minuses, losing electrons. So oxidation, increase in oxidation number is the same as loss of electrons. When an oxidation number goes down, it becomes less positive or more negative. Why? Because it's gaining electrons. So this basically is based on electron loss or gain, although it's much, much more difficult to see. For example, let's take an equation. Let's take methane burning in oxygen to make carbon dioxide and water. Now, all combustion reactions are oxidations. They're gaining oxygen, one of the early definitions of oxidation. Uh, what do we need? We need two there and we need two there to balance. OK. Now, when you're doing this, you can see very clearly electrons are not obvious. Therefore, it's very difficult to work out oxidation reduction in terms of electrons. Instead, we are going to use oxidation numbers. Now, to do that, there are some rules which I'm going to give you. They will be in my revision booklet, but pause the video or replay it as many times as you like. These are the simple rules for oxidation numbers. Hydrogen is plus one in virtually all of its compounds. There are things called metal hydrides, in which case it's minus one, but the, they are in the minority, the vast majority of hydrogen compounds, plus one. Oxygen, that's probably the most common element as well, is always minus two in its compounds. There again are exceptions. For example, uh, peroxides, you've heard of, I'm sure, hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, where hydrogen is bonded to oxygen like that. Now, the oxygen is obviously able to take the electron from the hydrogen, but it's not going to take it from another oxygen. So there's a stalemate there. That means these are plus one and these are minus one. So that, again, is an exception to the rule. But more often than not, oxygen is minus two. Group 1 metals are always plus 1 in their compounds, not obviously the elements. But by the way, by the elements before they've lost or gained electrons are clearly going to be 0. All elements will be 0. But once they gain or lose electrons, they have an oxidation number. Group 1 elements are always plus 1. Sodium, potassium, lithium, rubidium, cesium. Group 2 elements, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium, and those are always plus 2, no exceptions. Aluminium is always plus 3. Um, halogens, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, are usually minus 1. Fluorine is always minus 1, because fluorine is the most electronegative element. But if you put chlorine, bromine, or iodine with fluorine or oxygen, then it becomes positive because it's not as electronegative. Those rules will probably do you, I would think. If you know those, then you can work out pretty much any other element based on knowing what those ones are. So for example here, we know hydrogen is plus one, which means carbon must be minus four. Notice I do it for individual hydrogens. I don't put plus four there, that plus 4 comes from multiplying plus 1 by 4, but put it down for one of those four hydrogens. Oxygen's an element, therefore it's 0. Oxygen there will be minus 2, making carbon plus 4. 
Hydrogen is plus one, oxygen is minus two. So you will see that the hydrogen hasn't changed at all. However, the carbon has gone from minus four to plus four. An increase in oxidation number then has it's been oxidized. Oxygen has gone from zero to minus two. A decrease in oxidation number is reduction. So that means which of the two is the oxidizing agent and which is the reducing agent. Pause the video if you need to. So oxygen is being reduced. That makes it the oxidizing agent. The carbon in methane, you would say methane. The methane is being uh, oxidized. That makes methane the reducing agent. Now again, you can say the carbon in methane or you can say methane, but don't say carbon is being oxidized because carbon isn't in the equation. This is carbon, C on its own. Okay, so you can say the carbon in methane, but you can't say just carbon. Okay, that's oxidation number, guys. You find that is really, really useful if ever you have an equation and they say, is this a redox equation? Work out the oxidation numbers, and if they change, it is redox. If they don't change, it's not. Most reactions are redox, but acid base ones are not redox. Acid carbonate ones are not redox. Acid metal ones are redox.